Hey folks, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods with a, another neat little addition of Build It With Baird's. Uh, I'm out on a job site. We're not back at Studio 3B or at the manufacturing plant in Canfield, but today I'm joined by Mike Jones, Mike Jones Hardwood Flooring. How you doing, buddy? How you doing, Steve? We're not at the shop. We're out on one of your job sites. Yes, we are. Wow, I see a bunch of stuff going on here. You've been doing some sanding. You've been doing some light staining. Take me through, catch me up to where we're at today. Basically, we had an existing pre-finished hardwood floor here, and we had some floors that needed to be refinished throughout. And we sanded everything down, and we have one coat of stain on them at this point. So you're coming in here, you're taking two beautiful floors that some people would say, well, let's tear it out. And with your talent and expertise, you're making these 30 plus year old floors look like brand new through a refinishing process, right? right? Yes. And, and there's a lot of steps involved. So what we got going on here is we have um, someone installed a pre-finished floor of the same species next to an existing floor. And there was a divider between a room that kind of set up above the floor. The client did not like that. We're going to set a board between the two floors flush with the existing floor to fill in the void. Okay, so what we did here, we had a half wall that came out maybe about uh, a foot wide, straight across to about three feet out, and it was about three feet high. The client wanted to open up this whole area, so we found out that this floor is different from this floor. These two floors were laid at two different time periods. So what we decided to do is run a board straight across and do the repairs. And that's where you see me nesting and weaving in, and milling in these boards so that they'll get glued in and fit perfectly. So basically each piece has to be kind of milled. That's what we're actually doing, milling each piece. And then same thing on this side, the client took out a half wall here where you can see that they took it out. It's extended to about right here. And then there was a void where there's missing flooring about right here. So what we decided to do is nest it all back, weave it all in, so that when we sand and refinish it, it looks natural. So that's what we did here. Also, we have the same thing that's gonna happen at the fireplace. They had a T-molding that was installed on top of the floor, which was um, sort of like a tow or, or a trip hazard kind of a thing. And the client just wanted the floor to disappear into the tile. So what I did is I took a Festool saw and I ran it around three inches all the way around so that I could drop a board right in with a picture frame and the flooring will disappear into the tile on this repair over here. You know, back there around the fireplace, you really clean that up. You don't have that above floor level transition strip anymore, flush going into the marble, looks beautiful. Everything gets glued in because a lot of times you're taking away the tongue and groove so it's not tooth together anymore. So you have to use a really strong adhesive um, that yeah. is the key. So there's a male and a female of a tongue and groove floor and the male I can't use anymore because I can't tie into it with the square lumber that I'm, I'm putting in. So I go down with a chisel and a saw and I come in and I clean around each one. And after I do that, I glue in my new pieces and each of those will get glued in all the way around. And basically every board I put in, it's glued in. Your repairs are more solid than your actual floor. If you look at it really close, it was a pre-finished floor, so there's a micro bevel edge between each board. So when we go to sand this floor so that it'll match and look good with everything else, we're gonna take that micro bevel right out of there. So the sanding process on this floor is gonna be a little bit different than the sanding process on the other floors. We'll have to go down and grit to get rid of the micro bevel. These floors before we start were cut pretty bad. They were getting moisture from somewhere. So we've sanded them all flat, got rid of a good percentage of the micro bevel. Homeowner is ecstatic on how they look so far and they're at the stain stage, so. These floors are gonna look like it was brand new hardwood flooring installed in just a couple more days with you and your team here, right? Yes. What type of top coat are you gonna put on this? Well, client chose to go with a matte finish, so we're gonna run a sealer coat 
and then we're going to sand that sealer coat, and then we're going to put three coats of matte finish on top of this coat. And it's going to be just awesome. It's just going to be a beautiful look. So I think you won't have to do anything else to these floors for another 30, 40 years. Right. The value of this 30-year-old, 20-year-old flooring, it, it, it just cut the price point in half, right? right. You're going to get, th th this new homeowner is going to get another 30, 20 years, whatever the case may right. be, out of this floor. Three quarter inch solid hardwood, tongue and groove, and match traditional hardwood flooring that when it comes to value in a home, you can't with. match it. So, folks, if you're thinking hardwood floor or if you've acquired a new property, it has flooring, contact Mike Jones, Mike Jones Hardwood Flooring. Ohio. In Ohio, right? If you have that newly acquired home, this is a great option. Or if you're teetering in new construction or a remodel situation and thinking about hardwood floor, this just demonstrates the extra value involved in three quarter inch solid hardwood tongue and groove. It lasts a lifetime. Yes, it does. Folks, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the value of hardwood floor, existing or new, you can't go wrong. BairdBrothers.com, content studio, you'll see more of Mike. Mike, thank you. Thank you, Steve.